widespread notion persists that women as compared to their male counterparts are more unnaturally inclined uh, towards a peace, its moral uh, superiority, uh, feminine virtue. Traditionally, uh, women are seen as maternal, uh, nurturing and gentle, whereas men are seen as having a uh, propensity for violence and belligerence. Women talk about their problems. Men are solve uh, conflict physically requiring an outlet for their natural aggression. Regardless of the validity of this uh, notion, the underlying assumptions are widely endowed. Clearly, if uh, women are better at making and sustaining a peace, their involvement in post-conflict leadership is indispensable. In today's edition of Turn Up, we are talking about the role of women in conflict. A resolution will write back. It's another exciting edition of your program, Turn Up on Canal the English. We are broadcasting live from Douala, Cameroon, and the program is Turn Up, a program that seeks to empower women and the girl a child. And in most African societies, it today, Cameroon inclusive women still occupy inferior positions, both in the family and society. And uh, there is a discrimination against uh, them in terms of participation in decision making. Today we talk about women and their role in conflict resolution. We look at a conflict at the level of the family, how do women manage conflicts even at the level of the family before spreading to society and how does it affect society. We are talking about crises in some parts of Cameroon and across the world. How do women handle that? Do they speak out? The program is turned up as we said earlier and if you want to participate on today's program you can see our reactions on the number. You be seen on your TV screen. You can equally follow us on YouTube, uh, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. Now, before we get into real discussion, I would like you to know who our guests are. They are all women. We have invited a fine brain as usual. They are going to be giving us their stories, their testimonies on conflict resolution. We are talking about our women. Now, I'll be going with somebody that is very close to me, very close to my left side. She's called uh, Rokia Ebane, a social uh, a worker, let me put it that way. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Now, how challenging was your day? I have that habit of asking that question. I say woman is always challenging because um, it starts with um, you preparing for the day. Before mm -hmm. you start with the day's activities, it starts in the mind. So the whole hustle starts throughout the night, even before today. So usually it's challenging, but I think we are graced for that. All right. Yeah. We probably <laughs> have uh, Feka Pashibel. I love the name. You're welcome. Thank you. You're all the way from Boya? Yes. And you have to meet huge traffic on your way. And with malaria, <laughs> but I had to be here because it concerns us. Okay. It's time we told our stories by ourselves. Okay. We define what we want and get people follow us behind. All right. Now, you talk about being an activist. Now, how did you reach that level? Or what? How did you find that? Um, growing up um, as a young girl wasn't easy. Okay. From my home, what I saw with my parents, there was a lot of violence. Okay. And it got to a point where the family had to split up and we were sh given, shared out, distributed amongst um, my father's siblings. It wasn't also very easy. And then when I eventually got married, I still saw myself living the horror of my mom. Mm. And I was like, this cannot be happening. Mm. I have three children, girls and a boy. And I was like, I have to do something. These young girls I have must not go through the pain. I went through, they must not go through the pain my mom went through. Okay. So I said, in my own little way, I was going to see how to um, I meant that. Okay. Yeah. So that's what motivated you, that was pushed you to become an activist. Mm -hmm. Now, we need to know more about you and more about your association, how you've been fighting this. But today we're talking about uh, the role of women in conflict uh, 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 resolution. It's all about that. Now, I want us to watch uh, this report on the role of women in conflict resolution. I'll be right back after the report. <laughs> Africa 
other nations have been ravaged by conflicts resulting in the destabilization, displacement, and infrastructural destruction, all of which have gender-specific consequences. The impact of these conflicts on women has been severe. Women are not usually recruited in the armed struggle, but instead play the role of key caretakers of the family and therefore very vulnerable. Their contribution during and after conflict is very crucial and should not be excluded in any peace building process initiated by government NGOs of peace coalition. Women and girls must be included in the peace processes because they contribute to at least half or more than half of every society and are the key caretakers of the family. A family is the smallest but yet strongest component of nation. Therefore, if these aspects is excluded in post-conflict planning and peace-building efforts, ultimate peace, healing, recovery and reconciliation may never be attained. Unfortunately, as seen in the current situation in most countries in Africa and Cameroon inclusive, women are held back by the various traditional gender rules and are more prone to being victims of rape and sexual exploitation during conflict. Success stories of women in conflict resolution have been registered in countries like Liberia where women and girls gather around in peace, hurt, to mediate and resolve community disputes that have rather resulted into bigger conflicts. In Rwanda, after the 1994 genocide, there was a major shift in gender roles because many women were left widows and had to take up roles as they were the new heads of the family. The United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325 urges countries to ensure increased representation of women at all decision-making levels in national, regional and international institutions and mechanisms for the prevention, management and resolution of conflict. And this is because Women peace builders bring on different perspectives and priorities to men in the peace building process and their role in re-establishing social cohesion in the aftermath of conflict is vital. Dialogue is a powerful tool in peace building and women at the forefront of peace and security could be a solution to peace in Africa. Welcome back. We equally have a queen, uh, Marie. She is a Secretary General of Anulu Cameroon. We have her in the second part of the program. Now, let the discussion uh, begin after that uh, beautiful report. And I want to also start by defining conflict resolution. We're talking about women and their role in conflict resolution. There are two things. We're talking about women and conflict resolution. Now, how do you define this? Or how do you please the two? Where do you please them? Anybody can start. Um, I want to start by saying that um, there's a notion that peace is actually the absence of gunshots or probably killings and all of that. But um, peace, first of all, is internal. Okay. As a human being, there should be a degree of stability for you to live healthy. So. Uh, we have it at the level of conflict, but also we talk about the day-to-day -day running of um, our lives as human beings. When we don't eat well, we are not, we eat, it's conflictual because there are certain basic necessities that every human being, so it has to do with health, it has to do with proper education, it has to do with um, adequate um, feeding and all of that. So mm -hmm. then at the level when it, you start having um, conflicts gone short then it becomes another phase so that's why I said it was important to make people understand that most of the time when we talk about peace we think it's all, uh, all about no gone short 
we can have no gunshot, but then problems that not well managed that actually lead to okay. external conflicts when you start having gunshots and people losing their lives and all of that. Now, Feka, you hold the same definition? Yes, I hold the same definition. And when looking at the present situation, the conflict in the country right now, I always liken it to the home, like between husband and wife, where there is a problem. They don't take time to talk it out. Okay. They keep postponing, and then the problem keeps, keeps accumulating. And before they know it, it becomes something else. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you look at society today, do women actually contribute, or do they play a big role when it comes to conflict resolution? Let's look at the home, at the level of the home. Um, I think how I'm going to be very honest. Mm. She said something very pertinent in the in the beginning. In the African society, women have been groomed and have um, accepted to go through violence, conflict, disaster, turbulence, and it has become the normal. It's the norm in the African society. And um, it's, it's a problem because, like she said, when these things are not properly managed, it leads to external mm -hmm. conflicts when okay. we start losing lives. But then it starts, like I said, it's an internal, right. internal issue. Okay. It is the state of your spiritual consciousness because I think women have got to stop. We no longer need somebody to tell us who we are. We should understand who we are so that we play the right functions. Okay. But the moment you don't know who you are, you cannot be what you are supposed to be. So okay. there's a problem of purpose. Unless you understand the role of a mic, you will not use it. So answering your question, I think women are yet to understand the role they have to play as women. Humanhood, what is okay. the concept? Okay. What did God have in mind when he was creating and introducing human. And then it's important for women to understand that gender, mm. spirit has no gender. So there is no particular role that a man has to play or a particular role that a woman has to play. You're a human being and you have responsibilities towards making life on earth beautiful for everybody. Okay. It's a role mm. by birth. Okay. It's a right and it's an obligation. So when we sit and fold our arms and expect people to, to tell us who us we are <laughs> okay. and then now tell us what we are supposed to be to the society, then it becomes dangerous and then we find ourselves in, in the conflicts we are experiencing, like I said, either whether it's external conflicts or internal conflicts. Now, Feka, when you look women around you, are they really like, conscious of the role they have to play in society, maybe in their homes, families, and society at large? Do they know their role? Are they conscious of the vital role they have to play? Like Rukia rightly said, they are conscious, but then society does not let them play their roles. Tradition does not let them play their roles. Mm. The women, especially in an African context, have been defined. Mm. Their path has been chosen for them. By who? By tradition, mm. patriarchy, mm. and stereotypes. Mm. So everything, everything around the woman, is, they use it to force the woman. Like the woman knows, okay, for instance, women, most husbands beat them. Tradition has made it known to them that if your husband beats you, you're not supposed to shout, let the next person hear. Mm -hmm. And some of them really believe in this tradition that even if they come and see you in private to see my husband got me beaten, they'll be like, I, I beg, no tear no man. But they are dying. They don't want to live. They don't want to speak for themselves. Mm -hmm because they are afraid of what the society is going to say about them. Mm -hmm. They are afraid of how their friends are going to look at them. So I think women must learn. They have to know that it is their sole responsibility to run and manage their lives the way they want. Right. Now, is it possible that they can like, surmount these problems? How do they do that? 
let's take for example at the level of the family because if you don't solve it there it can explode get into society and it reaches a level where you can no longer manage it now the level of the family how should a woman act first of when all there's a conflict there's a problem within the family because even at the level of the family there are women who don't know how to handle conflict there's a problem of identity and education and i want to hear what my sister just said because i think it's high time we we said the truth. The system is structured machism. Men in their egocentric attitude and selfishness mm -hmm. and complexity realize that women are strong and because of their selfish reasons, every human is selfish. The moment you don't understand the role you play, you become selfish. But the moment you understand who you are and that the position you occupy, nobody can take that from you. You play your role and I play mine. So it's about not knowing who you are. It's conflict. And not having like yeah. confidence in yourself. Of course, because the society has been structured the way that men have designed the society that way to suit their ego, that they feel they should be the ones that have to take now actions. How, how do you surmount this as a woman? How that's, do what, that's what I'm saying is okay. a problem of education. Okay. And I don't think somebody needs to tell you that. You have to, when you come to this world, you come to a platform of self-discovery. You have to know yourself, not somebody telling you who you are. It starts from the education, from school. When you go to school, when you come back from school, the, the, the guy has to go play while the lady has to sit in the kitchen. And women encourage that. Now, it, it, it's a little bit, um, it's dramatic because I did a research and I realized that in the African traditions and worldwide globally, women were the source of political institutions, mm -hmm. spiritual institutions, you name it. They were in charge spiritually, okay? Some concepts even say that God is female mm -hmm. because you take a tribe where a woman discovers the deity she discovers the deity and then she takes it to her man and then later on he says oh she doesn't have the right to look at this deity because she's a woman mm -hmm. so her rights are stolen away from her why because men are complex women are strong mm -hmm. but that's why i said it's a problem of education it starts okay. from there and women are supposed to be the one educating their children but like she said when you you don't pass that information from one generation to another and she feels that she was born to satisfy the ego of some man we can never stand up for rights we don't know if we are not properly educated so it starts from self-discovery as right. men discover themselves a woman has the right to experience discover herself and then live her full potential as a human being all right Afeka, you're in a home where a woman has this conflict She's faced with uh, several problems. She's there. She keeps on saying it's going to be better, but the problem keeps increasing and gets into society. How do you think she can handle it? Um, a woman in a is home... It, is she capable of like solving that conflict at that moment, at the level of the family, before once, it goes out? One, if the problem starts and she discovers it, she can easily solve it. If she is given the opportunity to do if so, if she's given the opportunity, if she's not given the if opportunity, she's not, yes, if she's not given the opportunity, which is mostly the case, mm -hmm. they are not given the opportunity because the woman, first of all, starts seeing the problems, and then she starts calling the attention of the husband, mm -hmm. and see, you see, this is what is happening, this is what is happening, mm -hmm. and in the uh, usual male ego, he'll say, "You talk a lot." You complain a lot. You're boring. I need to have my peace. I want to rest. Can you keep it for another day? And the thing accumulates. When it gets out of proportion, that woman cannot handle it. Mm -hmm. The woman cannot handle it. Mm -hmm. And for the woman to maintain her sanity, mm -hmm. she has to take a decision. Either to stay, face it, and work it out or she moves away mm. to get her peace because she needs peace as a person to be able to continue whatever she she started all right now we'll look at women today in Cameroon 
in Africa and all at large, do we have uh, women who are like outspoken? Is it how you see women? In this generation, in the, in the, mm -hmm. because I remember... You think so? I think so. Because a lot so. of things women are not denouncing as well. Women have learned, like she said, it needs a lot of education. Because we have people who say we have the docile type of women who just sit there <laughs> like and want to like absorb all the problems. And like she said, um, they need education. I think with so many organizations and uh, groups, empowerment groups okay. that women go to workshops, they attend, they learn, and they are gradually. They, I can't say, um, I can't say they are fifty percent strong, but they are trying. Okay. They are trying. Mm -hmm. This generation, women of this generation, have started talking. Yes. But not to the degree where <laughs> most people <laughs> still want. It's like it's still like um, um, forty yeah. or thirty, one hundred. Mm, well, I, I like she, she's a woman. She's compassionate. She's understanding. <laughs> she's tolerant. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fine. But I think um, if you see, say point five out of ten, for me, it's not doing anything. Trying. We are always trying, and then mm -hmm. we try till we die. So you're you're either doing something or you're not doing it. Okay. So let's keep this discussion of trying. You mm -hmm. should be at your best. A flower is a flower. A flower does not try to become a flower. A moon does not try to become a moon. The sun does not try to become. It's the sun. So if you're a woman, you are a woman. You don't try to become. And that's why I will take it back to education. Mm -hmm. Until we solve this problem, Maureen, we will, we will talk about this for centuries. But the, the Beijing conference, when, like, it's, come on. It's a long time ago. Why is it a problem in Africa? Which means that women have failed in their home to educate children? Of course. Yeah. Women have always been the foundation of the society. And, and the, 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 the moment today? we have handed it over to men, that's where, why we so are where we are. women have handed everything to men? That's, that's, of course. Is that of course, how you see of course. it? Yes. Yeah. Now, how do you explain that? Education. <laughs> It goes back to education, handing down of tradition. I think the problem of Africa um, in particular with oral education, you know, it has to be oral. Nobody, nothing is written from one generation to another for other generations to come and have a continuity of the legacy left by the former. Yeah. So, you know, when it's oral at a point, it loses its, its value as time goes on. So we've lost that, that connection. First of all, women don't spend time with their children, children. they're either watching Same TV. Same as men as well. Uh, men have, have never been there. Have men never have, been have never been there. <laughs> They've never been men there. Men have never been there. And that's so the thing. So have fallen family No, you, 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 you talk about discussing dialogue. They're they never there. Yeah. Call them for dialogue. They don't want to dialogue. They just can't be what they are not. They are men. <laughs> let us, let them be yeah. men. And let the women be women. All right. Now, let's look at the workspaces where women work. Are they that, or uh, do they take decisions? Are they there to resolve conflicts? They should be, but I think they are not. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a man's world. Yeah, because so, uh, looking at the structure of Cameroon, mm -hmm. no woman is in any influential position in Cameroon. Okay. Yeah, because if you look at, okay, our president is a man, the prime minister a man, the president of the Senate a man, the speaker of the House of Assembly a man, <laughs> Uh, you know, so when will a woman be giving those opportunities mm -hmm. to take those decisions? Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to even the decisions that concern women, we have the Ministry of um, Women's Empowerment. Mm -hmm. Now, how often do they consult that particular ministry okay. to take decisions that concern us women? Mm -hmm. So, the whole thing is just the woman has been left behind. So, uh, with what you're saying, we don't have women who are bold enough to, to like uh, speak out on behalf of women. No, I, I, I we have women. Okay. We have bold we women. Want examples of women. We have who have bold, stood up for other women. We have bold women oh. who are speaking for women okay. in Cameroon, mm. but we do not have enough of these women. Okay. Yes. You, you, you know, you asked the question, you, you, you said something um, that we, women should be given the opportunity. I, I watched a program with you, you had um, Honorable Major Alice Nkom, I call her Honorable, and okay. um, our mother, um, Kawala, Kawala, that mm -hmm. is very inspirational. Now, how many women line up behind these women? 
we have a problem in first of all accepting ourselves as women mm -hmm. now men they back up each other men stand by each other if i have a problem and i pick a woman at random and so i go to her so you think the problem of a woman is a woman of course <laughs> oh, yes. sure. if i had a problem and i went to my fellow sister she would okay. not help me Why? but if of course she most of the time she will not help you mm. she thinks you are a threat okay she thinks uh, probably you reveal the things that she's supposed to be that she's not complex and i don't know why it should be the case whereas when a man has a problem his friends will run to him and back him up you can't imagine i've lived with men they know how to support one another with my brothers and cousins when they have issues okay they solve these problems. If it's a problem, they talk about it and they move on. When they have problems, he goes to a friend and he needs help. The, the man is always willing to help his brother. Why is it that women don't, that is the problem. I don't think men are problems. Because yeah. if you get to a situation where you get in a home where a woman is being her best, she's okay. giving her uh, abilities and talents, you don't, force it on the man when the man sees that you're apt and he sees the way you manage the family and when you advise him once twice and it works he comes to you it's automatic but if you don't contribute you don't do nothing he will never come to you for advice because you simply don't play that role but the moment you play that role once you solve a problem you become a need people will come for you all right but once you're not... So what are you trying to say is that women are not supportive? No, they're not. I so they're one another. Yes, for, like for, for, like for instance, let me take, let me take um, mm -hmm. a simple example. Men would cheat. Mm -hmm. Men would cheat. And for instance, my husband is cheating on me. Mm -hmm. And her husband is my husband's friend. Mm -hmm. And I will go to complain to her husband. Her husband will say, his friend, no. He will tell me that mm -hmm. those late hours he keeps, he mm -hmm. is with me. Mm -hmm. We are either watching a match or doing this mm -hmm. or doing that. But you see a woman, <laughs> let that idea just cross her mind mm -hmm. that you are cheating. I mean the idea. Mm -hmm. She will be the first to amplify it, mm -hmm. crucify you. Mm -hmm. I mean, before you even get to stand to speak for yourself you're already down the woman brings you down completely mm. so we are our problems to an extent so what should women do you're condemning the attitude so what should be the, the right attitude you adopt here education i always insist on the power of keep knowledge on insisting on education i know what knowledge can do okay is the greatest tool Men are educated, that's why they are doing what they're doing, the inventions and all what they're doing, because they are empowered. Women should be empowered. I'm not saying they should not go wearing beautiful dresses and hold beautiful handbags, but I think there is more in a woman than the fact that she thinks it's just about her body. Because so women just go to the house and wait for the man to come back. That's not the role of a woman. Okay. You can do more. There are, there are women that are presidents and they're doing great okay. why is it that in africa the woman thinks her role is to sleep on the bed and wait for the woman to make her pregnant eat and then the thing is she is not even able to raise the same children she brought into this world so once she is not educated she cannot help her children and that's why the situation gets worse from generation to generation mm. because those that are supposed to be the pioneers of educating the society themselves are uneducated. All right. Now, I want us to watch uh, this other story. We're talking about the role of women in conflict resolution. We'll be right back after the story. Women and girls bear the brunt of conflict. The inequalities that women are subjected to are exacerbated during conflict. For 2,500 years, war and peace especially was negotiated by a handful of exclusive political and military elite men. The first paragraph calls for the immediate cessation of hostilities. It was the end of the Cold War, a period in the 90s where we were beginning to look at the world from a standpoint of human security. 
The women's movement came to UN headquarters and said, we would like a resolution whereby women must be part and parcel of peace negotiation, peace building, and making sure that wars end. In October 2000, we were to chair the sessions of the Security Council. We decided to introduce an agenda item on women and peace. There was resistance in the Security Council, there was resistance out of the Security Council, but the overwhelming majority of members were in support. 31st of October 2000, the Security Council recognized for the first time the role that women have been playing. Those in favor, please raise their hand. The draft resolution has been adopted unanimously as Resolution 1325. really brought to light the need for women to play an important role in participation, in negotiation, in preventing conflict. 1325 in many ways is saying that not only women have the right to come to the negotiating table, they should be present, they must be present. It was always a collaboration between civil society, the UN, and government. Civil society on its own couldn't have gotten this resolution, and the governments in the UN wouldn't have gotten it. When women are involved, they make a real difference. Más podemos decir cuál es la necesidad de tener paz. Somos quienes tenemos la vida y los cuerpos marcados por la guerra. If you exclude more than half of the population in defining the problem and prescribing the solution, you're not going to have stability. Wherever there's war and violence, women exist. Women have things to tell us. And systematic, structured engagement of women should be standard practice in any international engagement in a conflict area. Welcome back. We have another lady here in the studio with us. She's called a queen. You're welcome. Thank you. To Canal the English. You are the G Secretary General of Anulo Cameroon. Now, what's it all about? Anulo Cameroon, thank you to give me the opportunity, the, the opportunity to speak here. Mm -hmm. um, like you say, my name is Queen Mary Dwara. I'm a woman. I'm a wife. Okay. I'm a mother. Okay. And also the voice of the right. voiceless. Okay. So Anulo Cameroon is an association. Why this association came out? Mm -hmm. It came out because of the crisis going to the Anglophone regions. regions. Okay. So I have children in Anglophone regions. I was so bothered. So I said that. Why children cannot go to school? Okay. I am a woman. I have to talk to authority that I want my children to go to school. Okay. So whatever is passing is not my problem. My problem Your is that, that children, children should, go should, to should go to they school. Should be educated. Should be educated. Mm -hmm. That is why I stay and I make a forum okay. and I invite those people to come and join me mm -hmm. and see how we can talk to the government mm -hmm. with some writing posts. That is why we create Anulo Cameroon. Right. The Anulo Cameroon have a particularity is that a person who is Anulo Cameroon have to have a peace. You have to have peace. Peace. Uh, peace the, of mind. Okay. Yes. Peace. You're talking about peace. <laughs> yeah, peace. Okay, yes. yes. So a have, peace crusader, that's yes. what you're talking about. Yes. So I don't have people who looking to div uh, uh, diversion, to, 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 to divide the okay. country, but I need people who well, have rich, rich yes, another line. another line. All right, now you, you saw, you, you, you said that in the two international part of Cameroon, your concerns for the fact that children don't go to school has been off on for over two years. You are a mother and you have children, but now have you tried to like send your message to the authorities and what has been your reaction? Oh, 
I'm so proud because, like a woman, I'm very boldness. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the sisters say that women are not taking the role, they are not playing yeah. the really role in the, role. their yeah. role. But I'm different of those women who are stayed outside and speak behind the room. Okay. I'm, I'm a woman that are the first ones. Okay. So I think that I'm doing a lot concerning this crisis in the Northwest and the Southwest region. Okay. I take my handwriting mm -hmm. and write and publish it in social media mm -hmm. and I send it to all administration mm -hmm. and tell them that I don't need war, I need dialogue. Okay. And this message passed through social media and I put a concept in place in place. Mm, okay. Who is calling uh, yes to dialogue, no to war. Okay. Before the first of October two thousand and seventeen. Okay. And I think that the concept play a big role okay. because what the government will planning to go to do, it give them all right. Now, yeah. have you ever visited women the other way, mm -hmm. talk to the women, most of the women, some of them, especially in the villages that are affected by the crisis, they are in the bushes, have you tried to reach them because they feel the impact, they will feel the pain. Have you talked with them and what has been your reaction? Yes. I went to Ekona to talk to, to women. Okay. I went to Ekona to talk to women. First of all, I first went to Boya prison. Okay. with gift to go and support people who are facing this crisis. Okay. So I went to Ekona to talk to women mm -hmm. because my mother-in-law, she's in Kona. So okay. she has advice on certain women. I talked to them that they have to play their roles. Mm -hmm. they, have, what? But they have to cry okay. and face the face of God. Say they don't want war, they want peace. Unless those children who are fighting let them see the face of God and ask God, God, give us peace, give us stability to live a better life in love. All right. So it's no need to fight, to share blood. Because when a human being uh, passed through that death, he will not come back. And I told them that English population and uh, so en train de diminuer. It's reducing. It reduces because they are dying every day. So if children are dying every day, who will take over tomorrow okay. to English region? So they have to know that life is not something that when you die, you come back tomorrow. Okay. It's taking a time to build a man. It's taking a long time to build a man. All right. Mm. Now, Feka, you live in the southwest region of Cameroon. Now, what is the situation like? We're talking about women here who are victims of crisis. We're talking about women who are fleeing away from war. They carry children on their backs. They try to carry luggage on their head. They think about their family when they are moving. They are running away from war. Now, what is the situation? What picture do you paint here? It's a very sad situation. It's really pathetic. And it is very interesting. At the same time, it's very interesting to hear my sister say, She's advocating for peace. But I'm not comfortable when she says worse things would have happened because horrible things are happening. Okay. Horrible things are happening. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We don't want war either. We want peace. Because our women and girls are exposed to so many things. They are raped. They are, they go through all sorts of abuses. Mm. They stay in the bushes. Which human being would choose to stay in a bush? So, the children who are fighting didn't just get up one day to fight. They were pushed to the walls. We want peace in those regions. We want schools to go back. We want the region to be demilita uh, demilitarized. There's a lot of military in these regions. And we all know when an army of a country goes out, it means there is war. And we know that war, from what I learned in school, in history, war 
is between two nations and not within a nation. So I give her back as an assignment to go back to the authorities because she says she's talking with the authorities to tell them to reduce the influx of military because it's now a nightmare. A little baby of two years cannot walk. When the child sees a uniformed person, the child starts crying. The child runs away. Is that the norm of life? Uh, did, did Anglophone women take their problem? We have. We have. I am coming to that. Okay. Yeah. I am coming to that. And I will still insist and maintain, no woman can tell my story more than me. Mm. That was why civil society organizations led by women in the Northwest and in the Southwest region came together and formed the task, a task force called SNOT, Southwest Northwest Women Task Force. Okay. And they have been working. They have been working. On the 29th of August, okay. we saw these women manifest. They came out in their numbers at Bongo Square in Buya and cried. But why did women why they cried? Why did those women Queen just wait when yeah. she finishes and, and you react. The women of the Northwest are going to do the same. And the cry is going to continue until we get peace. Okay. We want peace. Okay. We are tired of losing our children. We are tired of losing our spouses. We are tired of staying in the bushes. The risk is huge. We are suffering. Okay. So the Northwest and Southwest Women Task Force North is doing its best to advocate for that peace okay. on neutrality basis. Okay. Our stance is neutrality. All right. Yeah, Queen, you wanted to say yes, something? Yes, uh, I was talking that uh, this problem persists since about uh, two years. Mm -hmm. But I was so surprised to see that is in this time women are coming out and i'd always be surprised because why after the musonge uh, commission. commission that that one came out so i'm asking the questions did that serious if they are serious let us continue to do that every day until they have solution um so you let, don't let, 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 you let, don't let, let it's, me go. Not, it's not a, a personal thing, thing right let's, let's, let, let me go okay. let me go because mm -hmm. i'm i'm reading things in science, I'm not using uh, common by emotion. Okay. I have to ha ask question: Why is now? Why since the the, 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 start, of the start, crisis. start of the crisis? Because when you are facing a problem, let this find the solution instantly. Don't leave the problem to perdure, to to, 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 to persist. To, to to persist. persist. <laughs> yes. Mm. So take the step and go through the problem and ask solution. Okay. I am a woman. I told you that when I discovered that my children are not going to school because they are stopping the guy, I take my two hands, I start writing in Facebook, in social media. My family has started to say that they will kill me, they will do the best. I'm still alive because... And you're doing it because you're a woman. I'm doing it because I'm a woman. Okay. And what I discover in this country is that women don't want to take responsibility. Women just want to cry cooking job, where the woman have a job, you go to job and coming back. They are not involved in something that related the country. The country cannot go in without women. Women have a very important role to do in the country. If it is social media advocacy, you don't know me. We're meeting for the first time. Okay. <laughs> and I've advocated from the first day of the crisis till this moment. Okay. Many English speaking women have been advocating till this moment. Yes, but I'm and first then, speaking. I'm advocating. No, I'm because not, you not, are like, you happy. are trying to blame I'm not, I'm, us. I'm not, and I will I'm tell you, you will not feel my pain. pain there. No, I'm you will not feel my pain more than me. When no. I'm going through pregnancy, it is in not the same your pain. I'm not happy that you It is not dying. your roof, you hear the gunshots. That is why I'm talking, I'm saying that. It is not in front of your house to take the troops' problem. 
government have to do everything to stop war in the north and south so don't region. blame do your advocacy no. on your the own way woman, and let the anglophone they anglophone have been woman, doing their advocacy no, i don't see them they doing have, things like they do, have to we do. have never met because before now the first time i see them is <laughs> in uh, in bongo square they stand and cry so I, t I, I want to see them every day crying because when you need something you must persist and persist. You should have cried here. Yeah. As a woman who has children that yeah. way, or who is married to somebody from that area, right. you should have mobilized women here to cry. All right. To show me on? that you really support me. That is why I'm not saying that criticized. Woman, I'm not talking because about Anglophone. No, you because said you started are by saying Anglophone woman women. And, women. and I want and you to know that Anglophone yes. women have never been quiet. I don't see. They I have don't, never I don't been see what quiet. Anglophone women. Let us call media. Let us call women in this side. I'm able to come to English, English uh, speaking, uh, region. speaking region mm. and talk to women that let us talk to government that they stop because we cannot bond to them and they continue to kill them. Because and then those military you are dying. Be military are also are also uh, uh, and you cannot be uh, accusing them children them of other women. children so are killed. Killed. Civil you are boys that are dying are also okay. to feel uh, the can, we, can we move on? Somebody. Queen, Faker, can we move on? Now, Faker, I want to ask a question now. What is the role of women in a crisis situation like this? What should they do exactly? Because it's like the, the, the women are feeling the greatest impact is on women. They are more exposed. Take, for example, women in the bushes. How do they do? Especially when you have to see their menstrual flow. Can you, can you share their testimony here? It is very sad. The women in the bushes go through a lot. They use grass, they use rocks, they use anything available at that time to stop that blood stain. Okay. And then, how do they even take care of their personal hygiene? Okay. It's another story for another day. They are going through a lot. I work closely with those women. Mm -hmm. And what did and they tell you? They are very, very miserable they are sad they feel really bad okay they feel so so bad they look at themselves like maybe they are not part of us maybe they are not part of this nation okay now the question is now what is the role of women we have this crisis it's on for two years we have crises in the Far North region as well. We have crises. We have the Boko Haram attack. We have so many children have died. We've had uh, 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 so many victims are women, are young girls. Now, we've not seen women like uh, stood up to say no to this. We saw Cameroon Boso in Yaoundé marching. Our president we saw women in Boya marching. The question we're asking is that what is the role of a woman in a conflict situation like this? Um, I think women have to be united. Crying on one day and ending, is that the end of it? It is, that is oh, not the end. What I have you, said, you, you we no, have to, way. as women, mm -hmm. come together as one and stop the blame okay. factor. Okay. Because the blame factor kills the woman. Okay. Women have to unite as women. We started before now negotiations talks have been taking place okay not everybody loves the easy a media not everybody will want to face an authority and goes to call the media to come and okay. cover the event to come and say i am doing this okay. or i am not doing that not everybody does that uh, people have the, the, people the have people have their reasons for doing what they are doing mm -hmm. people want to be seen because they know what they are going to gain from what they are doing. Mm -hmm. But we don't, that is not solving the problem. Mm -hmm. That is not solving the problem. Mm -hmm. Snot has started, snot is not ending. Okay. We have a whole lot of activities to do until we get peace. Okay. Southwest started. Northwest will take. Okay. Because those are the two regions where oh, and, and the damages are taking place all right because you want means you're mobilizing at this stage and want more women yeah. to be involved you want more women to cry out to government and also to god yeah that's what because we think solution to is from god now queen you wanted to react you wanted to say yes something? i want to react concerning the woman who i'm going to bush mm -hmm. like uh, like she said 
she is too closer to those women. Mm -hmm. Why those women does not she's go? She's closer because maybe she has maybe been in the she, bushes. Yes, she has visited bushes them. Bushes. She leaves yes, their pains. Yes, what I want everything. to talk to the women who are in the bush is that it's not a good place to live. Mm -hmm. Nobody can feel fine in the bush. Why those women does not run to the governor place? Why did they uh, accept to go to to the bush? Let me, let, me, let, me, just let me finish. Let me finish. I think that I'm talking to those women who are in the bush or people who are around Boya to tell them to come out to the bush and go to stay. They can, st they can stay in front of governor house to, 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 to not facing uh, the militarized army people. Okay. They can go because they are facing bad life. They are not living well. They cannot eat. For me, it's very aching. Okay. It's very aching to see women to stay in the bush. They can come out. And I want to send a message to uh, 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 militarized people. Women are those that give them life. That give life. That give life. So I am not see how a militarized person taking gun and shoot to a woman. Because it's the woman that gives them bed. So I'm telling them to stop, to s disturb women whatsoever there's a problem don't take gun and shoot to a woman, woman. Okay. a woman is the one who give you bed whether you are a mother you are whether you are a president you are you are a minister a woman have authority on those people so right. i'm not happy to see women stay in in, in the bush i i send this message to the president of the republic of Cameroon that he is alive because of a woman okay it's a woman who give him bed so let it stop this nonsense who is going to uh, 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 English region okay. and give up peace because we are one. W there's no two Cameroon. Okay. So if it is the, the president of one Cameroon, let it give peace and stop all this war in the northwest and southwest region. Okay, thanks, Queen. Afeka, you want to react to that? Yes, I want to react because she says, why do these women choose to go to the bushes? Okay. Have you been to the Southwest region recently? Yeah. How many police checks do you pass on the way? M m uh, many. Good. Where those women stay in the bushes, they have to go through all those police checks. Remember, they are not in the bushes because they chose to be in the bushes. Mm -hmm. Their houses and property were burnt. Right to their identity cards and birth certificates. And you know what it means. Anyone who uses that road, without an ID card, is arrested and becomes a criminal or a suspect. So how do you want them to go through double, triple torture? How? Mm -hmm. The safest place for them is the bush, where nobody will come to harass them to show identification paper, where nobody will come to arrest them, where nobody will um, abuse them. Okay. And then, the governor is in Boya. The b places were burnt in Momo, in, in Meme Division, in the whole of Meme Division. How many police checks do you have? Let's take just from Kumba, from Kumba, to get to Boya. How many checks do you pass? So that was the safest area for them. So to them, so, so, the so bush be. is safe. Okay. Now we, we are running out of time. Now I want to get your last messages to the women out there, especially talking about their role in conflict resolution. We are, we are looking for a possible solution to this. We have a lot of African countries and women are most affected. They are exposed to they are the most vulnerable group. Now what are you saying tonight to women who are watching you? So the women who are strong, who are free, who are not very um, tortured, I want to tell them the time is now. This is the time Cameroonian women have to stand up as one. Forget tribe, forget region, forget language, and cry. Cry for peace to return to the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. All right. Queen? Yes. Just in two words, your message to women who are watching you right now. My message is that let women stand up and ask for dialogue and ask for peace. 
and let those people who are torture women stop to torture women because woman is passing through pregnancy through a difficult torture to give birth. So let me tell, talk to all those people who are killing, killing, and torture women, abuse women, that we, women, we are not accept that. And like association, Anulo Cameroon, I will not stop, I will denounce anything against a human being because we have to respect human being. Human being is not a fowl. Human being is not a dog. Human being is not a fish. Human being is somebody that speaks, analyzes, and merited respect. So stop killing people. Stop torture people. Let us peace come to the Southwest and Northwest region. Let the government of this country bring peace in the Northwest and the Southwest region. Because we, women, we are tired to see our children dying. Military, police, civilians, kids, we are tired. We want peace and we want that Cameroon come like if we did yesterday. All right. Thank you very much, uh, ladies. We had uh, we had Queen. We had a uh, uh, fake cow. Uh, you clearly had a uh, Rokia. We just watching from <laughs> from behind. We want to thank you, ladies, for honoring our invitation. It's uh, it was a great uh, topic. It was a great moment for you guys. We're talking about uh, women's uh, role in conflict uh, resolution. And if you're a woman out there watching this program, we want you to stand out. The, the women here are telling you to stand up and you should have confidence in yourself and you should fight for your society, beginning right from your home. The program was turned up. Thanks for watching. <laughs>